Hello everyone, this is Sam from Language Atlas, and in this video, I'd like to show you the complete Spanish B2 Anki deck. I refer to it as complete because it contains both the Spanish B2 grammar Anki deck and a Spanish B2 vocabulary Anki deck. So it's a complete package. It has everything you need to know to learn Spanish. Now in this video, I will show you three things. First, I'll show you the course structure of the complete Spanish B2 Anki deck. Second, I'll show you the course content. And I'll do so by having a look at three Anki decks within the overall complete Spanish B2 Anki deck. And third, I'd like to show you some brief editing options. Now, I'd like to begin with my first point, which is to show, show you the course structure. Now, as you can see, I have two Anki decks over here, a European Spanish B2 one and a Latin American Spanish B2 one. And I've opened them already over here. I'll just maximize it. Now, what is important to note is that there are two versions of Spanish the complete European Spanish B2 one and the complete Latin American Spanish B2 one. Now, again, the European one refers to the Spanish that is being spoken in Europe and the Latin American one refers to the Spanish that is being spoken in Latin America. Now, once you go to la languagealice.com and get the deck, you have to make a decision. Are you more interested in Europe or Latin America? I can't make this decision for you, so please take a moment and think about in which version of Spanish you're more interested in. Now, I'd like to begin with just showing the course structure. And just begin by showing you the European one and just move on to the Latin American one after that. Now, please keep in mind in terms of course structure, they're exactly the same. However, in terms of course content, so sentences, words, audio, IP annotations, that is how they're different. So I'll begin by clicking on this plus icon and we have the European Spanish B2 grammar over here. And we can see that there are five chapters inside it. We have pronouns, adjectives and adverbs, verbs, idioms, and articles and nouns. So if you look at chapter one pronouns, you can see that there are three lessons inside it. We have, uh, for example, over here, the one, uh, ones who, and that. And again, over here, you can see how to use that with prepositions. And we have over here how to use prepositions with loca in Spanish. If you go to chapter two, adjectives and adverbs, we can see that there are two lessons inside it. We have not at all in Spanish and positions of adjectives in Spanish. Uh, if you go to chapter three, verbs, we can see that there are actually a few tenses and tenses moods inside it. I'll just begin with the first one. So we have tense one, which is the future perfect. Uh, we can see how do you, when do you use the future perfect? How do you use regular verbs with the future perfect? And how do you use irregular verbs in future perfect? If you go to tense two, we can see again the same setup. When do you use the conditional perfect tense? All regular verbs and we have irregular verbs. If I go to tense mood number one, we have the imperfect subjunctive. So how do you use the imperfect subjunctive? So again, when to use it, all regular verbs and a few examples of irregular verbs. If I go to the tense mood two present perfect subjunctive, again, same setup. When do you use the present perfect subjunctive? All regular verbs and irregular verbs. And we have the third one, tense mood three past perfect subjunctive. Again, same setup. When do you use it and regular verbs? So that was the third chapter. If you go to the fourth chapter, we can see we have idioms. And we have a lot of idioms. So just to name a few, uh, how do you express hope for a completed action in the future? How to say if I were you, interrupting actions, uh, should have done something with deber. Uh, tener in imperfect versus preterit. Uh, we have used the Spanish present tense to refer to the future with future time phrases. Uh, would have done something with haber. So we have many, many idioms over here in chapter four idioms. Uh, we have chapter five, articles and nouns, and how to use neuter article law to refer to clauses, verbs, and adjectives, adverbs. Now I'd like to move on to the vocabulary part. So I'll just click on this icon over here to show you the vocabulary. You can see there are eight chapters inside it. Pronouns, conjunctions, verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, and determiners. Now if I click on this little icon over here in front of chapter four nouns, you can see that there are in fact 19 subdecks inside chapter four nouns. Now what I've done is that I've taken a look at all the words that are in chapter four nouns and I've categorized them by theme. So you can, if you wish to learn more about academia intellect, you can do so. If you wish to learn more about animals, you can do so. Uh, location, materials and substances, nature, environment, all the way to time, mass and numbers and transportation. So whenever you're interested in a certain theme, a certain category, you can learn more about that. Now, that was the European one. I'd just like to quickly show you the Latin American one as well. I'll click on this icon and you can, again, you can see we have the same setup. We have the I'll just click on this icon and you can see that we have the I'll just click on this icon and you can see over here we have the same setup. We have the grammar one and we have the vocabulary one. I'll click on this plus icon and you can see we have the same five chapters with the same 
content inside it as well. All the idiom ones and all the one in articles announce. Quickly show you the vocabulary one as well, just so you can see it's the same setup, same content, same structure. Okay. Now that was uh, my first point, which is to show you the course structure. Now I quickly like to note that I have made separate videos on Spanish B2 grammar and Spanish B2 vocabulary. So if you wish to have a more in-depth look at what to expect and see some other examples as well, uh, you can have a look at those videos. I will share those in the description comment section as well. So if you wish to have more details, have a separate look at those uh, decks as well, you can do so. But I think for now, this is enough for course structure. Now let's go to the second point, which is to show the course content. Now I will show you one deck from the Latin American one and two decks from the European Spanish one. I'll show you one deck from Latin American Spanish B2 vocabulary and then two grammar ones over here from European Spanish one. So you have both vocabulary and grammar. I'll go to chapter for nouns and I'd like to go to location. I'll click on study now. And this is what we see. This is the first car type. We have a Spanish sentence with two black areas over here, two underscores. Underneath it, we have the English translation of the Spanish sentence. The canal flowed through the city. You may notice that the canal is both bolded and underlined. Why is this the case? Well, it's your job to know how to say the canal in Spanish. And that is also what goes over here in the black areas. Underneath the English sentence, so underneath the English translation, we have a visual representation of the Spanish sentence. And this is here so you can better memorize the Spanish sentence, better understand it, better learn from it. And many studies have shown that if you have a visual representation, uh, it will really help you in learning a language. So you're learning Spanish, which will, which will be really helpful for you. So how do you say the canal in Spanish? El canal atravesaba la ciudad. El canal, un canal. Los canales, unos canales. So we can see there are three areas. We have a sentence area, which is the first area. We have a singular area, which is the second area. And we have a plural area, which is the third area. I'd like to begin with the sentence area. So over here, we have the correct sentence. It may notice that the answer that we're looking for is in blue. Now, why is this? I've color-coded all nouns in the noun uh, deck. So if a noun is blue, it means that it's masculine. And if a noun is pink, it means that it's feminine. Spanish is a gendered language. You have masculine and feminine. So this will really help you when it comes to identifying the gender of nouns and learning and memorizing them as well. Underneath the Spanish sentence, we have the IP notation of the Spanish sentence. This is here so you can better pronounce the Spanish sentence. Underneath that, we have the English translation of the Spanish sentence. And finally, we have the audio. El canal atravesaba la ciudad. The second area is the singular area. We have the singular noun in its definite form and in its indefinite form. We have the IP notation of the singular noun. And we have the English translation. Finally, we have the audio. El canal, un canal. The third area is the plural is the plural area. We have the noun in its plural form, the IP notation of it, the English translation, and finally the audio. Los canales, unos canales. Great. Let's do another one. Again, we see a Spanish sentence. We have the English translation. Uh, we have over here downtown, which is bold and underlined. So it's your job to know what goes over inside these blanks. So downtown in Spanish. Queda solo un par de kilómetros del centro. El centro, un centro. Los centros, unos centros. So again, we see it's the same sent set sentence area, singular area, plural area. I'd like to know that if you do the European Spanish one as well, you would see the same setup as well, but then, of course, different audio, different IP annotation in that. The next card. She worked for an agency that handled talent. An agency. How do you say an agency in Spanish? Trabajaba para una agencia que gestionaba talentos. La agencia, una agencia. Las agencias, unas agencias. And again, same setup, but now we see something interesting. We see that the Spanish noun is in pink. Now, why is this the case? That is because the agency is feminine. So again, I mentioned before, if you see a noun in blue, it's masculine. And the previous ones were masculine, so because they were blue. But now we see a feminine one. And again, this is color-coded in pink to um, allow you to understand that you're now dealing with a feminine noun. So this will be really helpful for you when you learn Spanish nouns. Let's do another one. The territory of the country expanded over the years. How do you say the territory? 
El territorio del país se amplió con el paso de los años. El territorio, un territorio. Los territorios, unos territorios. Great. Let's do another one. I grew up in a suburb where education was not easy to access. How do you say a suburb? Crecí en un suburbio donde no era fácil acceder a la educación. El suburbio, un suburbio. Los suburbios, unos suburbios. Great. The cabin in the woods provided him solitude. How do you say the cabin? La cabaña en el bosque le proporcionaba soledad. La cabaña, una cabaña. Las cabañas, unas cabañas. Great. Just do one more. I registered for a pastry workshop to learn to make desserts. A workshop. Me inscribí en un taller de pastelería para aprender a hacer postres. El taller, un taller. Los talleres, unos talleres. Great. So, we have seen many cards in which there is a blank area, and it's your job to know what goes inside the blank area. That was the first card type. Now, I like to show you the second card type. Now, the it, second card type is a little bit different. Now, you do not have to know it, what goes inside the blank area, but you have to type it. So I've skipped through some cards, and we are now with the second card type that I mentioned before. Now, we've seen the sentence again. We've seen the sentence before, pardon me. The canal flowed through the city. Before, we had to know what went inside the blank area. Now, we have to type it. And this second card type tests where you can spell the words correctly, where you can type correctly. And this is very important when you're learning a new language. El canal atravesaba la ciudad. El canal, un canal. Los canales, unos canales. Great. So as you can tell, I had the answer correctly. Hence, it is in green. But what if I answered incorrectly? What would have happened then? Let's say you don't, you do not know how to say uh, downtown. So let's say you do something like this. Um, yeah, like this. Queda solo un par de kilómetros del centro. El centro, un centro. Los centros, unos centros. So as you can tell, I had it kind of incorrect. So the parts that were correct are in green. The parts that I made mistakes are in red. And over here, you see, I can miss some things. Uh, the O and the C weren't there. So Anki actually corrects you when you make a mistake. This is really helpful if you wish to learn how to spell the words correctly. Now I could move on, but again, it would be more typing exercises. And I think you get the picture already. So that is what I wanted to show you from Latin American Spanish and what I wanted to show you from nouns. Now I'd like to go to European Spanish and I'd like to show you uh, grammar. And again, even if you're interested in other version of Spanish, I just urge you to keep watching because you will learn a lot from how these cards are structured. And I mentioned before, the structure is the same, but the audio, the pronunciation, some words, some sentences, that is what is different. I will click on this icon to maximize complete European Spanish B2. Grammar. And I'd like to show you two decks within this one. One is within chapter three verbs. Tense one, future perfect. And I'll show you all regular verbs. And the other one is within chapter four idioms. And we'll look at how to say if I were you. So I'll begin with this one, all regular verbs. Now, before I do this, just a quick reminder. When do we use the future perfect tense again? We use it if you want to talk about actions that will happen before other actions in the future. All regular verbs, study now. And this is what we see. Now, this you already know, Spanish sentence with some blank areas, the English translation of the Spanish sentence, a visual representation. However, this is new. When you do a verbs exercise, you will see the verb that you need to conjugate and you see the correct tense after it. So you need to conjugate this verb in this tense. Let's have a look. Usted ya habrá desayunado cuando el chofer venga a buscarle. Great. So this you already know, Spanish sentence. English translation and audio. Please listen to it. Perhaps you've noticed something. Usted ya habrá desayunado cuando el chofer venga a buscarle. Because we're now doing European Spanish, we also have a different voice. Again, there's a difference between Latin American Spanish and European Spanish, and you've already noticed the difference. Now, this part over here is new. Now, what is interesting about any card within the grammar deck is that they all have an explanation area. Because you're doing grammar, there's an explanation. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? And once you read this part, you'll understand this. 
So let's have a quick look what do we see over here. We see a conjugation table. This is here so you can know uh, how something is conjugated. So if you look at the answer over here, we're dealing with the usted subject pronoun. Uh, I bet in the future, we have Abra, which is over here. And we have the past participle, which is over here. And of course, please don't forget to form the past participle. You need to do the following, depending on the verbs. But if you think, hey, well, what is the conjugation method again? How does this work again? We have an explanation area over here for that as well. Um, conjugate a bear in the future tense at the past participle. Simple. However, if you've forgotten it, you have this area over here. We even have a more concrete example. We are going to conjugate the verb comer to eat in the yo form as an example. Uh, you take the yo form of haber in the future tense, which is abre. You take the past participle of comer, which is comido. So when you wish to say, I will have eaten in Spanish, you get yo abre comido. So let's do another one. When you have the house, you will have fulfilled your dreams. The verb and the tense. Cuando tengáis la casa, habréis cumplido vuestro sueño. Now you may have noticed that we're using vosotros over here, and this is because we're doing European Spanish. Now, if you're interested in Latin American Spanish, don't worry. Uh, vosotros type questions will not be in your deck, but if you're doing a European one, it will be there. So sentence, English, audio, conjugation table that we've seen before, and the regular verbs conjugation method. By then, you will have regretted it. Verb, tense. Para entonces te habrás arrepentido. And again, we've seen it before. The sentences, English, audio, explanation. We will have walked about 10 kilometers in total. Caminar in future perfect. Habremos caminado unos 10 kilometers en total. Who would have taken my red pen? Coger. ¿Quién habrá cogido mi bolígrafo rojo? And one more. By next year, I will have worked in this company for five years. Trabajar. Para el año que viene, habré trabajado en esta empresa durante cinco años. By then, they will have repaired the fault. Para entonces, habrán reparado la avería. Now, this was the first car type. Now, I'd like to show the second car type, which is this one. And again, we've done it before. We see a sentence with some blank areas. We see the English translation. We see, this, we see the picture. And over here, what you need to conjugate in which tense. And of course, you would have to type in the correct answer. And if you had the answer correctly, you would see it in green. And if it was incorrect, you would see in different colors, probably red with a bit of gray. Red what you had wrong and gray what you missed. So that is what I want to show you within the verbs. Now I'd like to go to chapter four idioms. And I'd like to go to how to say if, how to say if I were you. Click on study now. And let's take a look over here. We see a Spanish sentence. Uh, we see an English translation underneath it and a picture. If I were you, I would have looked for a cheaper house. You may have noticed the three, but we'll get back to that one in a second. Yo de ti hubiera buscado una casa más económica. So, sentence, English, English translation, audio, and explanation area. How to say if I were you in Spanish. To say if I were you in Spanish, you will say, and then you have three different ways to say how, uh, if I were you. And now you have these two constructions. Now, the first one can be used in any environment. However, the second and third are more informal and mostly used amongst friends. Here are some examples. So again, within idioms, you see different ways to, uh, to use idioms. Of course, in B2, you have the B2 level ones. Uh, and in this lesson, you will learn three different ways to say if I were you. A very important one if you wish to give someone advice or you just wish to share your thoughts. And three over here is just like a visual reminder for you to know like, oh, we're using the third one over here. If I were you, I'd sell an old car and buy an electric one. Si yo fuera tú, vendería ese viejo coche y me compraría uno eléctrico. Uh, and again, the one over here, if I were you, the one over here, just so you know uh, which one you need to know in this question. I wouldn't go too far if I were you. Yo de ti no iría demasiado lejos. I wouldn't get too close to that guy if I were you. Yo que tú no me acercaría mucho a ese chico. And again, uh, you may have noticed there's a two, but you could have used the third one as well. This is just uh, a small little hint over here. Uh, you may need it, you may not need it, whatever works for you. If I were you, I'd ask her out this weekend. Yo que tú la invitaría a salir este fin de semana. And again, you could have used yo de ti, but this question asked a different one. The first one. Si yo fuera tú, no abriría ese paquete hasta que vuelva mamá. And let's do one more. If I were you, I would have looked for a cheaper house. 
Yo de ti habría buscado una casa más económica. Great. Now, again, I wanted to say, if you were to continue long enough, you'd get the typing exercise, but we've already gotten there. So he would type in the correct answer. If you had it correct, it would be in green. If it were incorrect, you would have it in red. All right. Those were the three decks that I wanted to show you. Now I'd like to go to my third point, which is to show you uh, some brief editing options. Now, many people ask me, Sam, how do you regulate how many new cards you see per day? Well, if you go over here and click on this icon, if you click on here, options, you can see the following. You can see new cards per day. You can see maximum reviews per day. I can change this from 65 to 100. So I were to increase the amount of new cards I see per day. I can increase reviews as well to 100. And reviews is just a review, so something that you've done before. So you will see it again. And you can see the totals increased. I can decrease it as well. I can go from 100 to 20, for example, from 100 to 20 as well. You can click on Save. And you can see that the amounts have decreased. My advice to you would be to start with a low number. So I think 20 is a good example over here. This is because language learning is all about creating and forming a habit. And it's easier to do if you start with lower amounts. However, as you proceed, uh, if you wish to do so, you can increase that number the way you want to. Now, that was it for this video. You can get the deck at languageatlas.com. Again, once you go to languageatlas.com and get the deck, you have to choose, am I going to get the European one or the Latin American one? The choice I leave to you. I will share the links in the description. Um, and please, once again, I'd like to remind you that I've made separate videos on both the grammar one and the vocabulary video. So you can have more examples, more explanation if you wish to do, do so, but this one shows you both. So I hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you so much for watching it. I hope you um, learn Spanish in the best way you can, and I hope that this will help you with it. Wish you good luck with learning Spanish. Thanks again for watching. You can get the deck at languageatlas.com, and I wish you a very good day as well. Goodbye.